While you're working with a Leica confocal microscope, you're going to be working with some very expensive objectives. Uh, some of these objectives are about $10,000 each. And so it's very important that you understand the particular specific qualities of each objective. And we're going to do that by concentrating on information that's printed right on the barrel of the objective. Now to do this, we're going to go to a diagram on the screen and we'll be discussing all of these things that are printed on the barrel of each objective. You'll see on this screen here a 60x objective and a cutaway. Now the, the first thing that I want you to notice is all of the lenses that are inside the objective, these individual lenses are used to correct for several different aberrations that are caused when we produce glass for magnification purposes. We're going to talk about those aberrations in a few minutes. But first, let's just talk about the information that's printed on the barrel of the objective itself so that you can understand what these things mean. The first thing you see on the objective, of course, it's a Nikon objective, but we'll be working with Leica objectives on the microscope that we're using. There's a description of the type of lens, plan apo. We'll discuss that again in a little bit. But more importantly, the magnification of the objective. Here it's printed 60x or 60 power. Now you're going to be working with a 20x objective. You're going to be working with a 20x uh, wet objective. So we'll have to talk about oil immersion and other immersion. You'll be working with a 63x, again, wet objective. And you'll understand what I mean by wet in a few minutes. And also a 100x wet objective. So here we have a 60x objective. And then it has a slash, and next to the slash it has a number 1.40. That number 1.40 is called the numerical aperture of the lens, or the objective. Numerical aperture is a designation of the light gathering capability, or the strength of the objective in producing a very well lit high resolution image. And you'll understand more about numerical aperture in a minute when we discuss that more. But numerical aperture is very important. In order to achieve the actual numerical aperture that's printed on the objective, your microscope must be perfectly aligned. The condenser that we talked about has to be in the perfect vertical position. We're going to cover all this in detail. But you cannot just throw a specimen on the microscope throw the objective in the light path and get that maximum numerical aperture out of the objective if you're not doing all the steps that are required to achieve that. So numerical aperture is very important and we'll talk about that more in a second. You also see the printing, it's a little hard to see here, but oil. Some objectives use what's called an immersion oil. And so you have to put a drop of oil in between the front lens of the objective and the cover slip on the slide that you're looking at. Some objectives use glycerin. Others are called water immersion objectives. We have objectives on the Leica confocal microscope that use all three of those. So we'll discuss those as we go along. Now you also see some other numbers here on the barrel of the objective. One is the little infinity sign. This brings up the topic of tube length. What is tube length? Tube length is the apparent distance that you see the image that you're looking at. It appears to you to either be at a distance at which you would hold a book to do reading, that's called 160 millimeter tube length because the book is 160 millimeters from your eye. That's one form of tube length. Most of the newer objectives are infinity corrected. So instead of having a fixed tube length where you would hold a book at 160 millimeters, you're now looking at an image that appears to be coming to you from infinity. That's important because all these objectives from the different manufacturers can be screwed onto the different microscopes, but they're not always compatible. We have an infinity optically corrected system on the Leica confocal microscope. So you cannot use objectives that say 160, and they would say 160 right here. This one says infinity. 
So we have to use all infinity objectives. There's also another very important number right next to the tube length, and in this case it's 0.17. That is the thickness of your cover glass. Again, in order to achieve the highest numerical aperture from your objective, you must use a cover glass of 0.17 millimeter thickness. Now this can be confusing because some manufacturers sell cover slips that are labeled number one or number two or number one and a half. How do those numbers relate to the number that's painted onto the barrel of my objective? Well, a number one cover slip is about a 0.14 to 0.15 millimeter thickness. A one and a half cover slip is a 0.17. A number two cover slip is 0.19 or a 0.20. That's a little too thick. And so you might have in your laboratory a box of cover slips that's labeled number two. Those are too thick. You should use a number one and a half, which is a 0.17 millimeter thickness on your cover slip. The reason this is important is because all these lenses that are built into the objective are designed for use with a 0.17 thickness cover slip. So your maximum resolution will only be achieved with a 0.17 millimeter cover slip. The other thing that's important when you're making your image, when you're making your slides, uh, you're, you're either going to be working with thick se sections of tissue or very thin that have been thin sectioned. What's important is not so much the thickness of your specimen because a confocal microscope can accommodate a fairly thick specimen, but the mounting medium that you use to glue that cover slip in place is also very important because of a thing called refractive index, and we'll talk about that also. So make sure that you're using the proper mounting medium to mount your specimen and your cover slip to your slide. It's also a good idea to compress the cover slip a little bit if you're using a mounting medium. If you're working with cells that are in an aqueous medium, then that's, that's different. You don't have to compress that as much. But if you're working with a specimen that requires a mounting medium, compress that cover slip down a little bit and you'll get higher resolution images. Another feature that's important for you to note on the Leica confocal microscope about the objectives has to do with the protection of the objectives and your specimen. Most high quality objectives have a spring loaded front element so that when you push on it, it actuates against the spring and then comes back into place. Now this is to prevent any damage if you were to run your objective up into your slide. This is not a license for you to run your objective up into the slide. It's just a prevention measure that's used to prevent the breaking of your slide or of your specimen or harming these very expensive objectives. So be aware that they are spring loaded. Another feature that's important on the objectives that you'll be working with, particularly the 63X objective and the 100X objective, is that you can compress the front of the lens down and rotate it and it locks down and out of the way. This is very useful if you're rotating the nose piece and you don't want your objective to make contact with your slide or something on the stage. So remember that you can lock them down and out of the way. A third feature on the objectives that you're going to be working with is very important is that they have a correction collar. Some of them have a collar that you can turn on the objective that corrects for differences in the cover slip thickness and also it corrects for the different kind of immersion liquid that you use on the objective.